this week, the Bank of Ghana decided to reduce the policy rate, coming in at 12.5%. They don't believe that inflationary risks exist for this economy. What's your view? Was this a wise and prudent move? Okay, firstly, they did have uh, room to cut their policy rate, given that they've come from a period of almost 18 months of hiking up into 13.5% as it was at the beginning of the year. And with inflation in the single digits, and it's been kept there by low food inflation as well as a strong CD, they did have room to move downwards. However, we are of the view that they've reached the end of their cutting cycle at 12.5%. Mm -hmm. We have the view that inflation will begin to edge upwards in the second half of the year, mm -hmm. not due to rising prices, but due to a, a low base effect from last year. All right. I was going to find out about that because Ghana seems to be bucking the general trend globally of emerging markets where everybody's concerned about food and fuel inflation. We're seeing the Bank of China mm. raising rates. We're seeing the South Africans starting to dabble with that idea. Nigeria, they've already started. What makes Ghana different? Mm. Well, if you recall during the global financial crisis, um, when um, Ghana found itself with um, inflation above 20%, they were forced uh, to tighten monetary policy when the rest of the world's central banks were cutting or trying to uh, put in place accommodative monetary policy. So they found themselves on the opposite end of the cycle compared to most of the world's uh, central banks. In addition, they've been helped by benign food prices. They've had good rain, so they've had strong harvests, as we saw agriculture's performance in the first quarter of this mm -hmm. year. That's enabled um, food prices to remain relatively low, food inflation still below 5%. So they're in a strong position. Mm. Added to that, they've got a strong city with oil coming on stream. So that helps them out quite mm. a bit. We're told that real growth for the first quarter of this year is in the region of 23%. Uh, overall growth projected at about 20% this year going forward. I mean, that's phenomenal. Um, what are they going to do regarding price stability? Because the growth conditions are very, very good, but they do also need to keep on stimulating the economy by way of uh, consumer activity and uh, local investment. True. Uh, we're not seeing the full annual growth in that region of around 20%. We're projecting around 13.8%. So we expect a moderation from the first quarter numbers that we did see. However, 13.8% we consider still quite strong. That said, in terms of your concerns of what growth means for inflation, we've seen that credit growth is still uh, below potential. The NPC actually revealed that uh, although it recovered f uh, to around 8% in real terms, uh, from a negative 3% a year ago, it's still below potential. So a lot of that uh, activity we're seeing right now is not consumer d driven as we're seeing through the credit mm -hmm. numbers. So uh, we, we have the view that inflation and pressure shouldn't be at risk mm -hmm. uh, on the back of uh, strong consumer activity. We think a lot of it's got to do with that's happening in the mm -hmm. industrial sector. I mean, also there's the issue of managing the deficit and how to pay for it. So they're going uh, onto sure. international markets uh, for foreign loans, going to the international bond markets. I'm sure they'll do well by way of yields, but how is it that investors perceive and view Ghana? Looking at a variety of factors, growth, the currency, their reserve position, mm. the oil economy. Mm. Mm. True. Um, I think what's positive for investors, particularly investing in their debt markets, is one, that this economy is growing, uh, so they'll be able to um, meet those debt, service, uh, debt servicing obligations. Secondly, whether their reserves are in a sound position, which they are, we've seen a significant improvement over the past 12 months, and that's of course due with this new export they have coming on stream, so they're in a, 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 a sound enough position to meet those foreign debt obligations going forward. Regarding their fiscal position, which uh, you mentioned, um, yes, there were some slippages last year. They're supposed to be on a fiscal consolidation uh, program. However, they did spend more than they planned. But uh, this year, given the strong growth outlook, we think their deficit uh, position as a ratio of GDP, anyhow, will look relatively palatable. So we're not entirely concerned about their fiscal position uh, going forward. Yes, next year is an election year. And as you know, Ghana's fiscal deficit tends to move with the electoral cycle. But given the, all the positive headwinds we're seeing, we think they can cope. The general conditions on the ground, uh, Yvonne, if you look at the business and consumer confidence indices, declining somewhat. Business people not very sure that under the current conditions they're going to be pushing sales forward, they're going to see good profits. Citizens not co you know, quite concerned about whether you'll see employment increase, the employment opportunities, and whether or not, if not, the state can absorb them through welfare and safety nets. What are the conditions like on the ground? Okay. 
that softening of confidence from both the business and consumer community, first keep in mind that comes off a, a high base from the first quarter. Let's keep in mind, I think the momentum is still there. The slowdown came from the economic activity index, particularly from cement sales, suggesting a slowdown in con construction, as well as a decline in demand for industrial or electricity from the industrial sector. So given the high base it's coming from, we're not totally concerned given that uh, growth in the first uh, sector, sorry, first quarter was quite stellar. We think the momentum's still there and can be sustained for the remainder of the year.